big changes coming to Walt Disney World this fall. As feared, no more free FastPass Plus reservations. This is going to be replaced by new paid services via the new Disney Genie mobile app, a decision that has brought quite a bit of controversy and confusion to say the least. Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit, and for this video, I will provide an idiot's guide to the new Disney Genie services specifically for Walt Disney World. And at the end of the video, I will give my unbiased thoughts on the good and the not so good implications. Before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe for future guides, reviews, and other Orlando vacation content. All right, so I'll try and make this guide as beginner friendly as possible. So I'll start with a brief background to the changes. So way back in 2019, Disney announced a new vacation planning app known as the Disney Genie Digital Assistant, but until now, we didn't really receive any updates. Walt Disney World was of course closed at the start of the pandemic, and during this time, Disney announced that FastPass Plus would be temporarily suspended to allow for safer physical distancing. In case you don't know much about what FastPass Plus is, I'll leave a link to a guide in the video description. In recent months, Disney became a lot more relaxed with its physical distancing, with many questioning why FastPass Plus had not returned. But on August 18th, Disney announced that FastPass Plus was not going to return to Walt Disney World and was going to be permanently replaced by two different paid services to be launched in the fall, likely in time for the Disney's 50th anniversary celebration on October 1st. So what's new exactly? Well, Disney announced three new services, but only two of them will sort of fill the void of FastPass Plus. So starting with Disney Genie, this will be a complimentary digital planning tool built into the My Disney Experience app designed to make planning your way around the parks easier with a personalized itinerary feature, which will be updated throughout the day in reaction to new information. This can be personalized by entering the attractions, restaurants, and shows that you're interested in. But if you can't be specific, Disney will allow you to enter your general interests, such as Star Wars, Disney princesses, or Pixar, etc. Other features include the ability to see current wait times, as well as forecasted wait times for the future, supposedly to make more informed plans, as well as the ability to join virtual queues to any applicable attractions. So how exactly is FastPass Plus going to be replaced in the world of the Disney Genie app? This will partly be covered by the new paid Disney Genie Plus service. This is going to cost guests $15 per ticket per day, where you'll be able to reserve a slot on one of the participating attractions and experiences at the next available time slot, but only one at a time. When it's your time, you'll get to enter the attractions lightning lane entrance. The attractions included will be the likes of Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, Haunted Mansion, and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. All guests will be able to make their first Genie Plus selection at 7 a.m. on the day of their visit, regardless of whether staying off-site or on-site, so that's a key change from the old FastPass Plus service. Lastly, Genie Plus is also said to include some audio experiences and Disney PhotoPass extras. The third of the three new services is the Lightning Lane Selection Service. So this allows guests to pay to skip the queue on certain marquee attractions not covered by the Disney Genie Plus service. This is a separate service which does not require you to purchase Genie Plus. The prices are yet to be confirmed, but it is expected that they will vary depending on crowd levels. I would guess between $10 and $25 per attraction initially. So these lightning lane selections will be made on the day of your visit and can be used across multiple parks using the park hopper option. The naming of this specific service is going to create quite a bit of confusion, I suspect. So a lightning lane is the name of what will replace the physical FastPass Plus queues. And so both the Genie Plus service and the lightning lane selection service will make use of a lightning lane, but there won't be any overlap with the attractions. For example, Haunted House will only be used with Genie Plus and not on the individual Lightning Lane service. So ideally, the lanes used for Genie Plus would have a different name to the lanes used by the individual Lightning Lane service, but here we are. Referring specifically to the individual Lightning Lane selection service, guests that stay on site will get an advantage over other guests who can purchase their selections from 7 a.m whereas off-site guests will be limited to making purchases only when the park opens. So worth repeating here that both on-site and off-site guests using the Genie Plus service can make their selection from 7 a.m. on the day of their visit. It's only for the individual Lightning Lane selection purchases where on-site guests get an advantage. 
In case anyone is wondering, all attractions will continue to provide the old standby queues free of charge or alternatively the free but limited virtual queue spaces for the likes of Star Wars Rise of the Resistance and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Annual pass holders will be able to purchase Lightning Lane or add Genie Plus on a per day basis as with normal day guests, but it's yet to be confirmed if a yearly add-on option for Genie Plus will be available to annual pass holders. Disney is also set to make some improvements to the Disability Access Service, the DAS program, which I'll outline in the video description. In giving my thoughts on these incredibly controversial changes, I thought I would separate them into what I think are the pros and the cons, starting with the cons. So when it comes to these recent changes from Disney, the reality of the situation is that we've gone from having a free queue skipping service that was popular with a lot of guests to one that is going to cost money. Despite a lot of smoke and mirrors, this is basically what has just happened. Although hasn't really come as a massive surprise as paid fast pass has been offered to guests at other Disney parks and the paid max pass service has been very well received at Disneyland in California. But regardless, this doesn't appear to be a decision within most consumers' interests. Whilst $15 doesn't sound like a huge amount in the context of your park ticket, for families of four or more, this is going to be quite difficult to budget for. There's the impact on Disney World Resort guests, who previously had a big advantage when it came to FastPass Plus, so paid queue skipping is one of several changes in recent years which makes the case for staying on site more difficult. So we had changes to magic hours, overnight parking fees, no more free magic bands, Magical Express being discontinued starting next year. We won't know until October how valued the extra two hours for Lightning Lane selections will be for resort guests, but I suspect it won't be comparable to the 60-day FastPass Plus advantage. So yeah, difficult to see how these changes are going to encourage more guests to stay on site. I would also say to a lesser extent, these changes devalue the annual pass. One thing we'll know for sure about these changes is that people are going to be encouraged to use their phones a lot more in the parks. It's probably just an age thing, but I think having your experience increasingly controlled by a phone app does spoil the romance of the parks a little bit, but a pretty minor concern it has to be said. My last point when looking at the negatives, which I accept is embarrassingly naive, is that I think having a separate paid queue specifically designed to be out of reach for what is likely to be most guests is not a great look for Disney. I appreciate this is how things work in pretty much every area of life, those with more get more, including how Walt Disney World has always operated, but it's the aesthetics which I think is the issue here with paid queue skipping. It does sort of feel at odds with the messaging throughout Disney's intellectual property, especially the movie that the service is based on, and arguably chips away at some of the Walt Disney World magic. Despite these issues, this system does have some potential to improve the guest experience, so it's expected that less guests will be using the Lightning Lanes compared to the old FastPass Plus lanes, therefore making the standby lanes go quicker. Believe it or not, the typical queue ratio was 8 guests in the FastPass line for every 2 guests in the normal standby line, which explains why these lines could be slow. We do have some relevant data from the MaxPass system in Disneyland, which shows that less than half of guests use that service. Whilst Disneyland has provided a free option, I still expect guests at Disney World to be less likely to pay for Lightning Lane access than at Disneyland, as guests typically have to stretch their budget for longer vacations. But at this stage, it is impossible to know for certain what the adoption rate will likely be. When it comes to the free services that the Genie app will provide, it's hard to know precisely what is genuine and what is just marketing speak. My Disney experience has always allowed guests to plan out their day on the fly, but Disney CEO Bob Chapek promises better, more personalized and more customized experience for guests with less time waiting in line. I'm cautiously optimistic here. It's reasonable to expect that Disney will be better at controlling its guests proactively and reactively as its algorithms improve. Another debatable positive is that Genie Plus should make planning a theme park experience more accessible as all reservations are done only on the day that you're visiting the park, not two months in advance, as was the case with FastPass Plus, which did frustrate a lot of people. So I think it could be argued that it makes the process of queue skipping more beginner friendly, but at the obvious expense of those like myself who like to obsess over the planning to gain every possible advantage. 
So in summary, it does seem like mostly bad news for Walt Disney World fans who have to endure more nickel and diming from Disney. Disney's announcement video was its most disliked video of all time, so pretty clear what most Disney fans think about these changes. Despite this, there is some potential here with these new services, provided you don't mind Disney having more control over your day. It's worth saying that regarding Genie Plus and Lightning Lane selection, there was almost similar outrage when Max Pass was announced at Disneyland, which has since become a big hit with Disney fans on the West Coast. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm off with any of my hot takes. Do check out my other videos if you're headed to Walt Disney World anytime soon. And if you're interested in future Orlando vacation content, don't forget to subscribe.